You're listening to the Wedding Biz Network, the voice of the creative entrepreneur. Hey everyone, it's Andy Kushner with The Wedding Biz, in which I conduct in-depth and revealing interviews of icons and those who I feel are the next generation icons of the weddings and event industry. And all of this is to provide you with education and inspiration. If you missed last week's episode, it was with Ryan Hill, the founder and CEO of Apotheosis Events, a premier event planning firm located out of New York City that produces and designs star-studded premieres, including large Broadway openings such as Hamilton, as well as lavish weddings and so much more. And today's guest is actually two people. It is an interview of a master photography team, Gina Esposito and Sheena Minkins, the owners and principal photographers of Ane Atelier out of New York City. They're listed in Brides as being one of the best wedding photographers in America and in Harper's Bazaar as one of the top wedding photographers in the world. Although the interview was done virtually, I had the good fortune of meeting both of them while working together on Daniela Braga and Adam Friedi's destination wedding at the Amanera Resort in the Dominican Republic just last November. Gina and Sheena handled the photography. I handled the music for the ceremony and reception. We all had such a great time. And I also ended up interviewing Daniela Braga, and that was released just a couple weeks ago on the 14th. So enjoy this wonderful conversation with Gina and Sheena. Gina and Sheena, it's so fun to have you on. Obviously, we met when we were doing the uh, Danny Braga and and Adam Freed wedding in the Dominican Republic. And we might touch on that a little bit later, but it was great to see you both at work and, and seeing how, you know, just how dedicated and passionate you all were. It was really wonderful to experience that. So that was fun. So let's, I want to spend a moment first talking about your career trajectories kind of prior to partnering in 2016. So Gina, I believe you earned a degree in photographic imaging How did you find your passion for photography in the beginning? Where did that come from? Yeah, so I, when I was younger, I did a lot of humanitarian work in third world countries and um, just uh, a lot of, um, a lot of building homes and uh, just a lot of outreaches. And so I just found myself gravitating towards photography back when, uh, you know, gosh, it it makes me feel so old to say like before digital was really a thing. But, uh, you know, I would just remember going on these trips and while all my friends were kind of having fun with their cameras, uh, you know, their little point and shoots, their 35 millimeters, they were taking photos of each other. And I kind of just found myself gravitating towards the the village, the, the locals and the village children and just everything that I was witnessing at, um, you know, as a young teenager, it just really, um, I guess, coming from America, being 14, 15 years old, and just living, you know, a really privileged life in this country to see all of that just really uh, broke my heart and it pulled on my heart. But I found that I was just gravitating towards um, the locals there and just their struggles. And so at, a, at an early age, I really felt a connection to a camera and to photos um, and just found myself really flourishing in that area. Um, and then it kind of uh, was an aha moment that I had, you know, signed up to go to college and like most 18 year olds didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I was visiting a friend in California and was driving through the mountains and just, it just struck me that I was like, I want to be a photographer. And so uh, I changed my major um, a week before classes started and um, the rest is kind of history. Wow. Where did you go to school? So I went to school in New York um, and uh as I was going through school, I was also um, working for a friend of mine. Her fiance at the time uh, was starting his own wedding photography studio. And I thought, well, like, this is a great opportunity uh, opportunity for me. I'm not, I never really was a nine to five kind of girl and uh, I always loved to be in the field and be creative. And so as I was going to college, I was also freelancing for other uh, wedding studios in New York. And uh, it just really grew on me and stuck with me. And I thought, wow, this is this is really impactful. This is I'm documenting people's lives here, um, you know, even after people are long gone. So I was lucky enough and, and blessed enough to be able to work in my field as I was uh, getting my degree. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful opportunity. So, Sheena, what about you? I mean, I know that you spent, from what I know, eight years at Condé Nest and Time Incorporated. You worked with Vogue and People and Teen Vogue, Style Watch, Essence Magazine. And I believe and you specialize in content creation for brand partners, right? Across fashion and retail. Like what specifically did you do for them? Oh my gosh. So, um, so I, yeah, I worked in the marketing department of all of those titles that you just mentioned. 
Um, and it really, I was of such a diverse background. I actually starting off at Essence, um, you know, I was on the events team and, you know, in that marketing world, it is so much to do with events and you work so closely with events um, that it actually had a, a, a foot there, but then it also would involve content creation, as you said, which, you know, our role in marketing was kind of the bridge between the editorial side and, you know, the sales and business development side. Um, and so, so much of what we would do would involve being partnered with our uh, our advertising partners. And so, you know, for the team, it was all kind of broken into different categories. And I always worked within the fashion and retail um, space and sometimes entertainment when I was at People, but mainly fashion and retail advertising partners. Um, and, you know, we would create something that would connect their you know, their brand, their latest campaigns, their latest product launches, whatever it would be with the, you know, Teen Vogue or Vogue Reader, Vogue audience, um, or whatever brand I was working on at the time. Um, and it was just really f- always this fun, creative kind of puzzle of, you know, you know, um, your brand, you know, whatever magazine you're working, I was working for at the time. And then, you know, you know, whatever the other partner brand is, and it was kind of finding this unique way to weave them both together and to create kind of a custom campaign um, that, you know, and that kind of achieved both things that spoke to your reader in the way that you knew how to do that, but delivered, you know, a message or a product or something, you know, cool. And so I was always doing, um, you know, large scale photo shoots and video shoots and, uh, you know, really on the ideation and production side of pitching a campaign or an idea um, and kind of seeing that production all the way through the shoot through, you know, printing it in the magazine, launching the videos, whatever the entire project involved, sometimes events as well. And that, you know, kind of led into really, really cool life experiences, you know, uh, working closely and almost, I actually wrote two interviews with Taylor Swift on a huge (laughs) heads project. Um, I, you know, we helicoptered a blogger into Coachella, um, you know, different partnerships and things at Lollapalooza. So just really, really, really cool um, events and things and and photo shoots. And, um, you know, I I love that old life. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about how both of you partnered, you know, and and again, I guess that was 2016, five years ago. Um, Now, and either of you can answer this, but weren't you both already good friends prior to partnering? We were, yeah. Sheena um, was best friends with my cousin, uh, and, um, is still very close with her. And so we've kind of known each other for a really long time and didn't really have the opportunity to, uh, to hang out. And so we ended up, uh, you know, the more I hung out with my cousin, uh, you know, in the city and, and would see them, we kind of realized we had a lot in common and, uh, Sheena would invite me, I guess we can say it now, right. Cause you're out of, you're out of Conde now. So it's not a, it's not taboo to bring this up, but uh, she would always invite me on, you know, her trips and be like, hey, like, you know, can you fly out to Sedona with me? I have this this big project I'm doing and like, come and we'll go see the Grand Canyon and we'll do these things. And so she was always inviting me on trips with her um, through obviously Conde. And um, I was really her only friend at the time that was able to make their own schedule because uh, I had my own photography uh, company at the time. And vice versa, she always had done photography as a hobby and took classes in in college as well. Um, And so when I had destination events, you know, I would have her come and second shoot with me and we would elongate those trips. And so the more we kind of started hanging out and becoming friends and essentially crossing the bridge and working together, um, you know, she had hired me to shoot a few things for her at the magazine. And obviously she was already working with me on weddings. We just realized that uh, we're just kind of this combustible in the best way, like creative team and kind of was thinking, oh, there's maybe something more Mm -hmm. here than really meets the eye. But we had built this creative connection off of our friendship. And then it just kind of overflowed into us thinking really insane stuff happens when we're together. Maybe we should look into being business partners. And at the time I was, you know, I was burning candles, uh, burning a candle at both ends. And so was she. And so it was just kind of the opportunity presented itself. And we had already kind of been through the stresses of traveling together and kind of mixing a little bit of, of work with friendship and realizing we can we can definitely do this. And that's kind of how we became friends and then kind of journeyed into that uh, path of potentially looking into being business partners as well. You know, it's so interesting. I mean, this is real interesting to me because, I mean, some people know from listening to the show, I've got Kushner Entertainment and I I partnered with this guy, Robert Sherman, who owned Washington Talent this entertainment company in DC. So we both, we were actually competitors, but we had become friends 
like years and years earlier. I mean, we didn't really hang out a lot. And then it came around to the point where uh, we th- we started to think about maybe combining our, our, our talents because whenever we'd get together, it was just electric. Like, you know, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like really, a, yeah. Yeah, really exciting. And we literally, it was almost, it was like dating, like once a week, once a week (laughs) for a year. We did. We got together once a week for a year and then ended up partnering. And and it has been just explosive ever since, you know, but here's the thing. Didn't you both have to then, in a sense, especially you, Gina, if you had started earlier, I think around 2011, I mean, you both had to rebrand and reintroduce yourselves to the, to the industry and the public, right? I mean, how did that, that's what you had to do. Yeah, I mean, I, gosh, I have been photographing weddings. I'm going to lower my expertise level and just say over a decade because then I, I give my age away. Uh, but no, I've been I've been photographing weddings since 2003 and then shot my first wedding in 2007 and then went fully employed at the end of 2011 or self-employed rather. Your first wedding fully on your, in your, under your own company. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I had freelance. So yeah, I mean the, I had been in business. It was under my name. It was under Gene Esposito. So I had had a successful business since like you mentioned, 2011. And uh, so, yeah, essentially I was, I was located uh, more so out East on Long Island in New York, and then wanted to obviously become business with business partners with Sheena, picked up the company and moved it into Manhattan, rebranded to an atelier, which we locked ourselves really in a cave for probably about, I don't know what Sheena, like four days, five days. Um, and we're like, we're going to think of a new name because although Sheena did not care that the business was under my name. I cared because when we would be talking to clients, they would be asking to speak to Gina. Um, and I'd be like, no, no, you could speak to Sheena too. Like this is, you know, this <laughs> right. is her, this is her company. Yeah. Right. But we ended up, you know, knew, no, we knew that we wanted to be an atelier. We just, we dabble in a lot of creative fields, be it, you know, photography, you know, video, um, just creative content in general. Um, and so one of my good friends who's an architect actually said, why don't you take the nickname that everyone calls you and why don't you reverse it? And so our friends jokingly call us the Ina's, um, spelled right. the way Sheena's name is spelled E-E-N-A. And so right. we took Ina and inverted it to be an A and an A Atelier just sounded quite oh, beautiful. So we kept it. I didn't figure that out. Wow. It is truly, it is truly, the company is truly our name. Little Easter egg in there. Yeah. Well, and Sheena, I, you know, I know that with you know, with photography, it's really important, critical to fully immerse yourselves in the present moment. And yet at the same time, you know, have that like inherent sense of an intuition to anticipate key upcoming moments. And and somewhere I read that that you both had said, quote unquote, as photographers, the very nature of our vocation calls us to be observational. So much of our work relies not only on our ability to recognize nuance as visual storytellers, but to process and translate the narratives at hand. Can you say more about that? Sure. Is that, I mean, I guess I wrote that at some point. That sounds great. That sounds really great. Good <laughs> it, it job, does, Gina. It's good. Um, <laughs> it's great. Really hey, you pat on the I, I look, I agree with all of it. I don't know when I said it, but I totally agree. Yeah, it's, um, I think, especially when it comes to weddings and events and, you know, there, so there are so many different forms of photography that you are doing on, like, let's take a wedding weekend, for example, where, you know, you are, um, you're shooting some product, you're shooting some environmental and landscape and decor, and then you're shooting portraits, and then you're shooting, you know, photojournalism and just documenting an event as it happens. And, um, all of those different roles kind of require you to take on and put off different hats. But throughout all of it, one of the biggest responsibilities that we see and feel on ourselves are, you know, it is, it is our role, our responsibility to document this. We are the storytellers. We are, you know, the documentarians for our clients, our couples, you know, the person of honor, whoever it is. And so to me, in order to do that job, well, you have got to kind of take yourself off and, mold yourself, put yourself into the role of seeing through the eyes of what that client or couple or whoever, how they're going to see, how they're going to want the story told, how, what resonates with them. Um, and so much of that, you know, I, I never want to shoot something in the way that I think it should be shot. Of course, you know, there's your expertise that you lean on and there's the baseline story that you're always going to tell just to, you know, to get those foundational details. But for every project, everything that you know we shoot, we want to capture it in a way that's going to resonate with that couple, with what's important to them, with the nuance that they're going to see. And I think that sensitivity, you're constantly kind of stewarding that sensitivity in an, in yourself as that person to um, 
to be able to mold yourself and to not approach things in a prescriptive way, but to kind of always keep that canvas open so that you're painting something new every time. Yeah, it's a real balance, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And don't you both work together? That's from what I understand on on all, the weddings, all events. You you got you both work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we shoot everything together um, for the most part, just because there's you know that foundation of why we even went into business together is that we just felt like there is this spirit of play and imagination, and there's just something really cool that happens creatively when we're both involved with someone seeing something and someone going, yeah, and we could do it like this. And then it kind of grows and builds and becomes something better when we're together. And so, you know, we've always, we've decided that for the most part, we will always shoot everything and and be partnered together because there's parts of the story that I get, parts of the story that she gets. And it just, it creates the thing that we're proud of when we're, you know, when we're both truly involved in the details of it. So yeah, we're always together. But then the cost of it, the flip side is that you're not able to take on as much work. Yes. But, you know, I would say yes. And it's always painful when, you know, when we're already booked on a job and something great comes in an opportunity and you're like, oh, we're we're already booked um, because we, you know, we won't split up. But I think at the same time for us, it has always been about quality over quantity. It's always been about doing less and doing it better. And I think for our trajectory and where our goals are, where we want to go for our business, for our portfolio, um, you know, we, we've truly enjoyed doing more, being a part of more immersive experiences, being, um, on more meticulous projects, being really in the depths of, you know, whatever it is that we're shooting, whoever we're working with. And so in order to do that, well, you have to take on less. Yeah. Well, and you both, I mean, you both are doing so well in a relatively short period of time. So it's working, you know, it's not like you have to question it. Thank you. Yeah. I want to be sure you know the wonderful news of our latest show, Stop and Smell the Roses, with acclaimed lifestyle and event design expert, Preston Bailey. Not only will he share the secrets, tools, and technologies behind his extraordinary ability to create a theatrical environment out of any space, you will also discover more about the man behind the magic. Preston will reveal how his focus on personal growth has been the root of his professional success, and you'll have the opportunity for him to answer your questions along the way. Plus, Preston will be inviting onto the show many of the star celebrities he has worked with in the past, so you don't want to miss a single episode. We also have another great show on the Wedding Biz Network, The Business of Being Creative, with host Sean Lowe. Since debuting, his show has really taken off, and he's continuing to bring you the creative business advice he's shared with accomplished industry notables. Be sure to take advantage of Sean's talkback opportunity by recording questions and comments from right there in each episode's show notes. So, if you are a creative who is turning your craft into a business or want to take it to another level, head to theweddingbiznetwork.com and take a listen to Stop and Smell the Roses with Preston Bailey and The Business of Being Creative with Sean Lowe. That's theweddingbiznetwork.com. So can either of you, if, if you could take me or both of you, uh, take me through your general process, just generally speaking, when you first meet with a client, uh, a wedding client, you know, taking it through the event, you know, how do you both handle that? How do you split up responsibilities as partners? Do you do it together? How does that go? You know, that's so funny when we, um, you know, a couple of people have asked us this question and they said, you know, when you became business partners, how did you decide who would do what and how would you divvy up the responsibilities? And it's funny because we, we so naturally fall into our, our strengths and gravitate towards what we're comfortable with and what we excel at. Um, So it it truly is a, it truly is a perfect yin yang that um, as annoying as this is to say, we did just kind of fall into those positions. So Whereas Sheena obviously excels so much more than I do uh, with the use of her vocabulary and eloquent words, I'm more of kind of like the quick answer. Well, you know, I'll kind of jump on the emails and and we'll divvy things up that way. But as far as you know, meeting clients and things like that, um, you know, COVID has been so crazy, and I I cannot believe that we're approaching the two year mark in another you know whatever it is six right. weeks is just wild for right. me, but. COVID has really um, made in-person meetings almost obsolete. I know, I know. Um, which has been really interesting, especially being in this industry 18 years now, because I started when I was five. Uh, it's just it's just wild. And so most of our new client appointments now are on Zoom. 
uh, which Sheena and I both handle. So even like Sheena had mentioned earlier, where we're both shooting together, we're also basically doing everything together. So we're doing new client appointments, you know, we're, we're meeting with them, we're speaking with them, we're 98% of the time, both present when there are phone calls taking place and things like that. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of time spent. But again, we're, we're both there through the entire process. Yeah. And I think so much of, you know, our approach to our with our clients and developing that relationship is that, you know, when it comes to photography, especially, and especially when it comes to, you know, portraits, and really, the larger project overall, so much of what we shoot, as we said, and how we shoot is a collaboration, you're co collaborating with, you know, whoever that is. And so for us, it's important that we're both present to, to read, you know, the faces and read in between the lines of what people are saying and what they're not saying. And tone is so important. And language choice is so important. And, um, you know, it's all the things that people say and don't say that for us, we, we absorb it all. And all of that goes into our approach to, you know, their storytelling or their portraits or family dynamics or any, you know, all of those things are so important just to keep people not just comfortable, but to, um, keep them immersed in the experience to, to, um, to truly capture who they are. You know, you want as much exposure as you kind of possibly can to develop that rapport and to, to develop that sense of, you know, comfort. And I think both of us, you know, as people, I think Gina and I, we really pride ourselves on having an extremely diverse, you know, base of clientele and working with, you know, the per- the wedding that we just shot is, you know, they would never even be friends with the next wedding that we're shooting. And they would never be in a room with the next wedding, the, the couple that we're shooting. And we absolutely love that. But um, it does, it keeps you on your toes. And for that reason, we we never want to assume people are the same. They same personality types, you know, same uh, approach to things. So as much exposure as we can get, as many questions as we can ask and or as much as we can absorb as possible, we're there to soak it all in. Well, and I'm also thinking, coming back to the idea of both of you doing this together, I mean, obviously they need to be able to feel vulnerable, you know, in front of both of you. And so I guess they go into this having a relationship with both of you. And so, you know, and I'm also thinking, you know, coming back to the whole idea of how because of the pandemic, we're having to do Zoom and you know, I, part of me, you know, part of me likes it. I don't have to leave my house, <laughs> you know, I, right, right, you know, right? <laughs> right. We're saving a lot of time as well. Absolutely. Yeah. But on the other hand, there's nothing like being in the same room. It's such a different feeling to me. Like I'm really mixed about this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I am so sick of watching TV and seeing little Jeopardy boxes of faces. It feels too Jetson-esque to me. And so I'm, yeah. I'm ready for in-person meetings. There's, again, there's nothing like, shaking someone's hand or giving them a hug, or just, again, being able to read somebody's unspoken body language person to person. There's nothing quite like it. Yeah. And also, you know, I, I, I want to get into this too. You know, again, we met at um, at Daniela and Adam's wedding in the Dominican Republic and at, at Amanera, and it was also being covered for Vogue. How does that affect your overall approach? Like, do you both feel, I, I mean, I would think that you would feel pressure at the same, I mean, at on the other hand, you obviously have a lot of experience and all of that, but is there this kind of behind you, this kind of sense of pressure, knowing that it might be covered in the end uh, in a major publication? I'm going to let Sheena take the bulk of that, but I think before, I know exactly what she's going to say, um, but I'm pretty sure I could speak for both of us when I say that we actually thrive in high pressure situations and challenging situations because we're a little sick. We love it. We love it. <laughs> We have some alter ego NFL player living within us somewhere. And so where we thrive in, in competitive, you know, in, in, in fun competitive, um, but something like that, where you do feel the pressure and you feel like, oh, pressure might be on. It doesn't feel like pressure, but even in the times when you do feel a little pressure, it just kind of challenges us even more to be great at our craft. And so it's not a buckling feeling. It's an encouraging feeling. Um, but Sheena, if you want to kind of speak to how we shoot and. I feel like in the moment that you're shooting, it's all the same because it doesn't, it doesn't matter who it's going to. Yeah. Um, if it's going to be, you know, on what cover it may be, what magazine or publication or, you know, title it may be on the cover of in that moment, you are so solely focused on giving that client the absolute yeah. best that you can and giving your all and pouring your full artistry. And so it, it doesn't change my approach at all. The um, 
or the, I guess the level of pressure um, is truly no different because we, we carry that amount of pressure on ourselves to just do the best possible job we can and, and give the client something that will blow their minds, you know, of, and truly our favorite thing is, is when we, we have couples and they get their photos back and they go, I can't believe that's us. You know, and the two things that we we kind of hear most are either I can't believe this is us or this is so us that you captured this. And both both of those things are what we're always aiming for to hear both from a couple. So um, I think when you have nailed that, there are going to be cover worthy, incredible images that right. for, for us, it's about doing what we consider the baseline of like we did our absolute best. And no matter who that's going to, because it's going to the client, we're going to have that level of pressure on us every time. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. What's the most difficult part of, of what you both have to deal with? Like, what what do you still, is there anything that you feel you still struggle with in a sense? Oh, that's a good question. That's a great question. I want to get into the hard stuff too. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I think the hardest part is, this is such a, this is such a like process question, but I think the hardest part is literally part of the process where we have to now whittle down all of these beautiful photos of this day or this weekend or this week to deliver kind of what we think are the top X amount of photos and and kind of turn those around immediately. But, you know, other than that, I think, I think any seasoned vet would say that at this point, I would hope that they have the majority of, of everything worked out that they don't feel like anything's too hard anymore. Um, but kind of still keeping it fresh. But I think, you know, for me personally, I mean, I don't know, Sheena, would you would you say that like, picking out those top 100 images or, or something along those lines would probably be the most difficult because we're so attached to all of the images, obviously. Right. Yeah. I'm emotionally attached to every single photo that I take, like good or bad. I'm like, no, but this was the most, I just, I'm so sentimental about everything. And it's why I'm a horrible color of images. I cannot, you are terrible at calling images. Yeah. I'm much better at doing someone else's than my own, but I think that's, you know, that, that passion there. But, um, but that's also what makes me, I think, excel at editing um, that emotional attachment. But I would say um, the truly the hardest part is it's the turnaround time be, from the second the wedding is over. Yeah, people expect it really fast now. Which you can't do anything about that process or not. For us, we truly want to go through. And you know, as you're shooting, you know, the moments, you know, when you've captured something where you go, this is a, this is a headline shot. This is a cover shot. This is one of the ones that's going to go back to them. And you're kind of keeping tabs throughout the day. But even still, when you go through your images, you know, you're still surprised by, oh my gosh, this came out better than I thought, or, or I didn't even realize this was a moment in the moment that I captured it. And when you're going back through, so there's the second the wedding or event ends, it's like the, the time clock starts that you have this short amount, this short window of time to go through and you for us, we want to give people a sense of, um, to have them have something in their inbox that next morning, that next day, in the next two days of something that truly tells a decent portion of their story and what happened and all the major events and the major moments. And also give something back that is as excellent, the quality and the aesthetic that they're going to have as their final images X amount of weeks later when the entire project is delivered. And so, um, the hardest part for me is that as you know, the editor at the lead editor on our team and the one who sets the aesthetic for every single wedding, every single project that we do, I will always edit myself to set exactly what this is going to look like. And then from there, the rest of our team handles the majority of the, the rest of the edits. But, um, you know, when you're working in that crunch time and I want to go through my whole creative process of, you know, trying out, you know, this type of, you know, aesthetic, this type of aesthetic, or just seeing what direction it's meant to go in. I like to take my time there, but at the same time, you know, when you're trying to be as meticulous as we are and deliver something that is final, final ready, and to do that across, you know, 75 images within a number of hours after an event, it's hard to do both, but, you know, we, we always get it done, but it's that, that crunch time, that pressure time, that time clock is always kind of the, the hardest and the highest pressure moment after the wedding. Yeah. Well, and it's getting shorter and shorter, right? People have expectations. Uh, They want to get it on social media and all that. They want it yesterday, yeah. And don't you all work in both digital and film? 
We do. Yeah. So I was blessed enough to be able to be of an age where digital didn't exist yet uh, when I was going to school <laughs> for photography. That's a blessing, right? Right. Yeah, it is. Um, and so obviously, you know, learning on film and shooting weddings in film, um, although, you know, we're we're both hybrid shooters, um, I give a lot of credit to you know, uh, the Jose Villas and the KT Marys um, of our industry who are predominantly film photographers, just because, again, you know, like you mentioned, the the turnaround is so great and speedy with when we're shooting events now that, you know, film is film is incredible and film is beautiful, but it's definitely for a certain clientele that has the patience to wait for the final product, just because, again, with a digital image, it's 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 instant, right? Well, they, they, they have to have a value for that, that different process, that different pace and approach and that it's not going to, it's not the same process. It's not the same cadence that you have when you're shooting fully digital. But also, you know, to be able to understand the different mediums, um, you know, someone really has to be able to have an eye to kind of be like, that's, that's print, like that's film, that's 35 millimeter, that's medium format there's a different nostalgia to it. There's a different feel, no, you know, no grainy preset or anything that you can kind of slap on in a Photoshop or a Lightroom. You can always generally tell, well, I mean, I can, but I guess a true creative can kind of always tell like, oh, this is a preset versus this is, this is true film. But Hmm. to be able to appreciate both, they both have two very different meanings. Obviously digital is incredible because you never miss the shot, right? Or, Or you hope you never miss the shot, but you, 10 times out of 10, you probably won't because it's, it's so reactive. You're there, you can shoot, you can delete, you can edit on the fly, you know, with film, it's, you really have to hone your craft. You have to understand, you truly have to understand reciprocity. You have to understand pushing and pulling film. You have to understand how to handle things. You have to know how to read light meters and things like this. And so, um, you kind of have to breathe a little slower. You have to walk a little slower. You have to, um, just move slower overall when you're shooting film because it's so much more intentional. You can't just kind of hold down a shutter and hope that you get, you know, get the moment you want. It's it's a very intentional craft and art that has to be honed and and worked on in order to be achieved. And so again, it really does take the right type of clientele because and no harm no foul, but there are just people that can't see the difference between film and digital and that's okay. Or they just don't value, yeah, which is okay. Um but it is a beautiful beautiful craft um and there's nothing like you know, seeing a picture come to live or seeing it literally come off paper before your eyes when it's being developed. It's a real, real strong sense of pride um, when you're holding something tangible in your hand. Mm. And you've been, both of you have been partnered, we, you know, we mentioned earlier for about five years, two of which have been during the pandemic. Incredible. <laughs> what are some of your goals moving forward? Where would you like to see yourself in a few years? So for us, I think we have recognized that when it comes to truly the the most high profile weddings and events, the ones that are truly headliners, not only in the wedding and events industry, but headliners for you know major national media, um, so much of them have always been shot by you know male leads, um, and it's something for us that I think we have wanted to and have been building towards you know having a portfolio having. Um, a name, having just the type of experience and um, exposure that, you know, soon there's going to come a time where someone of, you know, incredible note is going to turn and say, I want, you know, an all female team and all female team to lead this wedding or event or whatever high profile, you know, experience. And we want to be in the position um, to be that team, to be the ones that are considered um, for that opportunity. And, you know, I think in that way, when you look at the, the top events and weddings and things that the fact that they have, you know, truly always been led predominantly by, you know, male only leads or solo stars. I think there's, there's truly an opportunity there. And um, I think there are incredible, incredible, you know, female leads um, and female photographers who are doing amazing, you know, high profile weddings and events. But I think there's still, you know, when it comes to those, those top, top, the ones that make national media, you know, there's, there's still a little bit of a glass ceiling there that we're still breaking through. And so I think that's something that's, you know, exciting and it's on the horizon for all of us. And I think, you know, whether it's us or some other female leads and some of the incredible women in this industry, we will be cheering on whoever it is, but I think, you know, to be in a position to be considered for opportunities like that is, is, is huge for us and exciting. It's a goal that's still ahead. 
Mm, that's wonderful. Well, look, I really appreciate the two of you doing this. I just so much admire and respect the work that you both do and being able to see you in person, you know, in, in action uh, was really fun. And uh, I, I just can't thank you enough for doing this. No, thank you for having us. It was it was so wonderful to, you know, been a wonderful surprise to just be able to see you. And, you know, we joke with people all the time and say, why does it take leaving the country to meet people who right. are in your backyard? And, <laughs> That's and so, right. 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 It always works out that way. So, uh, you know, I don't doubt that probably the next time we'll see you will be in another fabulous country as well. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, same, same. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Gina and Sheena. Be sure to check out their website, which is aneatelier.com. That is spelled A-N-E-E-A-T-E-L-I-E-R.com. You can get that in the show notes at our website of thewedningbiz.com. For social media, check them out on Instagram at aneatelier. And if you can think of three good friends who you think would really enjoy this interview, and it's a good one, please be sure to share it with them. And another thing too that really helps the show is to give us a review, a really top rating and top review wherever you get your podcast from. I would appreciate that so much. And we will catch you next week on The Wedding Biz. Wedding Biz.